Hi, this is Professor Angela Rasmussen from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Utah. And today I wanted to go over the BJT, or a circuit that contains a BJT in DC um, sources in when we have the saturation mode. So the goal is to understand the steps involved and then we're gonna go through an example of how to use it. So the method for solving DC um, voltages and currents in a BJT circuit is similar to um, the active mode, except for this time we're gonna use the saturation mode. So assume it's in saturation, and then you're gonna use these conditions for VBE. And if VCE is not given to you, then you want to use, um, just assume that VCE is going to be 0.3 for an MPN, and then VEC is going to be 0.3 for an, a PNP. Um, you can also look that up if you know the transistor number. You can get it off of the data sheet for that transistor. So you're going to use these values, and then you're going to also use either the voltages that are already given in the circuit, or you're going to take loop equations from base to emitter, collector to emitter, using that VCE value, and then you're gonna do a current summation equation to get your last equation of IB plus IC equals IE for either um, PNP or NPN. Note that you cannot use, cannot, that's a cannot, use the active mode relationships. These are no longer valid. So you cannot use that in your solution when you assume saturation. So for all of these modes, you're gonna assume the mode, solve the circuit, and then test the conditions to see if it's satisfied. If so, then you are done. The solution is consistent. For a saturation condition, that's gonna be these conditions. You have two conditions. One is that your voltage at your collector is less than or equal to VB. Remember, equals is the threshold, and that's when you're in an NPN, and for the PNP, it's the opposite. You also need to look at what this value is called beta forced. So beta typically is you know around 150, 100. It's a high number. Beta forced will be a lot less than that number. So it can be 2, 12. That's when you know that you're in saturation. So again, if the solution is consistent, you're done. If not, you're going to assume the different modes, active or cutoff. And then you're going to reanalyze the circuit with those um, steps and then check that solution. So here is an example of a BJT that is in saturation. We're given this VCE sat of 0.2, so we're gonna use that value. Beta is given as 100, and we wanna find beta forced here. So the first step is to um, set the values between VCE, which is gonna be here, at 0.2, and then we also wanna set that VBE at 0.7. So these two values you set, and then you're gonna take the loops from the base through the emitter, and also from the collector to the emitter. So we'll first start and do this loop here. So I would have a plus and then a minus, minus, and then the second sign would be a minus. So this equation will be plus two, minus 10K times IB, minus 0.7, minus IE times 1K, and that will equal zero. So that's one equation. And now in the past, we've related the IB and the IE through that active mode relationship. Again, we cannot use it here. This is act, not active, this is saturation analysis. So our other loop we're gonna take is through the collector to the emitter. So we're gonna use a plus three, minus IC10, minus two, and then again a minus IE1K. So the plus three minus 10K times IC minus 0 0.2 minus IE times 1K equals zero. And then our third equation is gonna be that current summation. IB and IC is equal to IE. 
So these are our, this is our set of equations. Note that you can also do node voltage here if you want to use the node voltage variables instead. For example, I could set this as VB. and use that node for my currents out of that node. So here I would have VB minus two over 10K, plus here it would be VB, and then I would do a minus 0 0.7 over 1K. And that would be equal to zero. And also I can do that node voltage at VC or VE. I can do it at either side, pick one of those and then create the node voltage from that. If I use VC, those current equations is gonna be VC minus three over 10K. And then the one going down is gonna be VC minus 0 0.2 over 1K equals zero. And then I would need to write this equation in terms of VB and VC and VE. So VE would be just IE times 1K. VB is going to be two minus IB times 10K. And, I, and VC is going to be 3 minus IC times 10K. And you can use that as a matrix and solve for all of those variables at once and get all of the IB, IC, IE, and then VB, VE, and VC. So I can um, do the algebra, which is this here, and you have that written out that you can go through all of the algebra as an exercise. This is going to yield a value of 243.8 micro for IC, and IB is 118, so beta forced is going to be that value of 243.8 micro divided by 118.2 micro, and that gives a value of 2.06. So our check here, again, is that we check that VC is less than or equal to VB and the beta forced is a lot less than the original value of beta, which was 100. So yes, 2 is less than 100, and VC we would have to calculate um, from the equation above which I don't think I actually calculated it, but we could also check that one. If we wanted to solve this instead of algebra, we wanted to solve it using a matrix, then we can use this method here. So we have the three equations. I have it set up um, with I, B, I, E, I, C. Again, those variables don't matter which one you choose first, just be aware of which order you place them in so that when you solve it using MATLAB, you're able to get the answer. So this is my A matrix. I set this as X and this is B. So X you don't write into MATLAB. You have to just know what that is based on how you set that equation set up. And then you're going to say that X is equal to B times inverse of A. And that will yield your values for IB, IE, and IC, which end up being these values. IB ends up being 95.83 micro, 341.7 micro, and 245.8 micro for IC. So plugging those values in, you get 245.8 micro divided by IB, which is 95.83 and that yields 2.56. Again, that is light, way less than the beta that was given of 100, and so we are in the saturation region. 
So that concludes the solution. Um, sometimes though we, we create a design and we thought we had designed it to be in active mode and it turns out it's not and it is in the saturation mode after we do the analysis and we say, well, what can we change here so that we are in the active mode? So we would want a condition and the most easy thing to change usually is this resistor of RC. So if we were to look at this and say, as a designer, what change could we make to just that resistor without changing any other voltage supplies? And so what we wanna do is look at it now in the active region and analyze it that way. So what condition for RC needs to be met for a transistor to stay in active mode? So the threshold, remember, is when VC equals VB. So this is where we want the condition to hold. Therefore, this would be the minimum value that VC can be, and then it needs to be greater than VB to stay in the, satur in the active region. So the equation we had was the two minus 10K times IB minus 0.7 minus IE times 1K was the loop equation from the base to the emitter. Now we're looking at solving this with the active conditions. We can use that IB is equal to IE over 101 and plug that in and solve for IE. And this is the algebra to solve that. So again, I use, you can use that as an exercise to solve and you get a solution for IE and IB here. And then we can get the voltages for VB. And we're gonna set that value of 1.883 for VB equal to, or we want VC to be greater than or equal to that value. And VC equation is the three minus ICRC. And so knowing the IB equation or value of 11.7 micro, we can plug that into the beta IB relationship and get 1.17 milli for the IC and note that this is for the active current in IC. So using that and plugging that in for this current, we get um, that uh, RC, we can solve this RC now has to be greater than or equal to that three minus VB over the IC value. And that ends up giving us that RC needs to be greater than or equal to 955 ohms. Sorry, I did that backwards. This needs to be less than, let's see, cause I'm gonna take, yeah, I'm gonna take from here, I'm gonna take the IC RC over to the other side, which will put it less than or equal to, and then three minus 1.883 and then divide by the IC. So it will be less than or equal to that value. So RC needs to be less than or equal to 955 ohms. We'll keep this in saturation. I mean, keep this out of saturation and into the active mode. So when it's equal, it will be right there on the threshold and so I would wanna pick a value, say half of this value to make sure I'm well into the active region in order to ensure that this stays in the active mode. So that would be a good starting value as a designer to say this is where I'm gonna start. And from there I would go to the simulation software and simulate it to verify that it will still meet all the conditions. All right, this concludes an analysis for a circuit in the saturation mode. Thanks for watching.